Uh, subject of Scientology never came up in the early years. I knew that L. Ron Hubbard was my great grandfather, but all I knew was that he wrote science fiction books because I liked to write when I was a kid and I would just write stories spontaneously. And they're like, oh, you're a writer. You know, your great grandfather was a writer. And, and uh, they gave me Mission Earth. I got the whole 10 volume hardcover, colored, glossy covers uh, set. And I remember having that, you know, when I was really young and reading through that. And a lot of it was, a, it was an inspiration to me as a little kid to just know that I had a writer in my family. Like it felt genetic and they kept telling me about it. But I didn't know anything about Scientology. I can't even remember the first time that my family mentioned Scientology. That word was like banned. You know what I mean? Like we didn't talk about it at all. And it was just like this kind of dark, you know, uh, part of our past. It was like the you know, the uncle that went to jail or something, or like, you know, the grandma that was accused of murder. Like, it was just, we don't talk about that and people get quiet about it. And you know, I, I kind of had to learn it on my own, actually, as a Baptist Christian kid, which I grew up as and was like super hardcore Baptist, and learning in books about other cults and seeing Scientology and seeing L. Ron Hubbard's name. And so when I would originally ask my mom about it, she was like, well, you know, we talk about Elrond for like a minute, and then she would start talking about Jesus. <laughs> it was like, just, just think about Jesus. We, we don't need to worry about that. He did bad things. It was just kind of like he, he did bad things, and, and you know, you don't need to worry about it. And it was, it was very much like a one day when you're older kind of thing. But uh, I learned a lot of it through those books and kids on the playground making weird references to it. But I'm talking black sheep, I'm talking midnight, black, dark, black hole sheep. I mean, that shit just did not come up. Uh, you did not want to bring it up as a little kid to L. Ron Hubbard Jr. I think that L. Ron had the most carnivorous ego of any man that's been on this planet. I don't really think it was about money all the time. I think that, that I think he was desperate for money for a lot of times and he was always coming up with crazy angles to get it. Whether it was like gold hunting or expeditions or you know, even writing sci-fi was just another hustle that he had within a pretty short period of time. It feels like he just went from one place to one place trying to get military payments and hustle this and steal Jack Parsons boats and just like, you know, nothing that had anything to do with writing. And I think that he has some kind of psychotic break, you know, because Excalibur never really gets talked about that, you know, but that was before Dianetics. And he had this book that he literally said that the 12 people that have read it have gone crazy or killed themselves. He actually told someone that uh, a guy read it in a book publishing office and then literally finished the book and walked to a window, opened it, and jumped to his death. And he thought it was that amazing and called these book publishers to come and check this book out. And none of them showed up. And he couldn't sell it. And even later in early forms of Scientology, no one's read it, right? There's no text of it that I know available. And they used to offer to sell it for like 25 grand, you know what I mean, in the, in the early 50s. So, I mean, he, I think that it wasn't just about money. I think that at a certain point, L. Ron convinced himself just through his own self-hypnosis that he was the baddest man on the planet. Like he was one of the, the, the greatest minds that this century has ever seen. I think that he was actually legitimately nuts. I think that he was manic, 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 manic. So manic depression runs in my family and I think that he was just utterly possessed of this vision. It's like he wrote himself into his own novel. He became the great adventurer swashbuckler. Like every failure that he had in his life before that, he was able to rewrite with an entire new cast who all believed in it, you know, and fostered it and created this entire structure around himself. It was like it constantly presented this like very aggressive self-help book but like the Xenu and the aliens, which critics have been saying for decades, of course, but it was, that was when it blew it up on connecting Tom Cruise believes in aliens, which is a very important thing for a lot of people to get. And that, that just changed the entire conception of it. But still, they don't understand what they believe. You know, they just know sort of aliens, 
L. Ron Hubbard is some guy, that, you know, and that's how Scientology wants it, though. They, they want it to be as mysterious as possible. I don't think, uh, they believe that they're like transcendent psychology, you know, I mean, that there was like Freud, there was Jung, and then there was L. Ron Hubbard, who like expanded the entire universe. And that's a very, very different, but it still works on mental exercises and literally very mechanical things like moving cups and things like that that convinced people it's a science. I mean, Elrond doesn't say explicitly he's God. It's almost like he's the greatest inventor or like scientist or discoverer, you know, of all of these truths of unlocking your brain. So it works more like a dangling carrot versus spirituality. If you believe in Jesus, you're saved. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's very easy things to do for most religions or at least pretend that you're doing, but Scientology is like a constant boot camp of like lessons and exercises and like, you know, on and on. And it makes it very, very different than any other religion. Protest against Scientology. I think anonymous is awesome. Partly because it's fucking anonymous, one. So whoever I'm praising right now, I don't even know who you are. And I don't know if anonymous is certain Scientology haters in particular or hackers or it's just everybody. You know, and that kind of protest is awesome because they brought World War III to Scientology. That was the biggest mistake Scientology will ever have. They've had a million specials, they've had a million 2020, you know, all that. And adults watch those. And a lot of them already made their decisions about Scientology. But stuff like South Park, stuff like Anonymous, is that it hits kids at an early age where they understand Scientology is ridiculous. Like they laugh at it. And you have all these people just hanging out in the sexy mass. And it belittles it because they're not, and, and they, because they figured this whole loophole around it. And so they're the biggest shank in the side of Scientology, is anonymous, is awesome.